Hello, everyone. I'm Kelly Linvoy, VP of Communications and Public Affairs at Arthritis Consumer Experts, and it's my pleasure to bring another episode of CR Arthritis from the Canadian Rheumatology Association and Arthritis Health Professional Association's annual scientific meeting. Um, one of the great things for ACE to attend this meeting is we get to meet a lot of bright, interesting leaders in the arthritis community, researchers, clinicians, and one of us, one of them is joining us today, and that's Dr. Korea Bindi. Dr. Bindi, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Dr. Bindi is a clinician investigator at Sinai Health System, University of Toronto, her clinical expertise is in inflammatory arthritis with a focus on arth uh, rheumatoid arthritis and her research primarily focuses on outcomes of RA. She also has a keen interest in studying comorbidity in RA, including mental health disorders and cardiovascular disease, which is what we're going to focus in on today. She's also a principal member of the Cardia Study and clinic at Mount Sinai Hospital and investigator in the Cardio Room program at U of T. Uh, Dr. Bindi, to start off, I think a lot of our viewers would be interested in finding out a little bit more if they're not aware about the connection between heart disease and inflammatory arthritis. So maybe you could start with that. Sure, absolutely. So what we know about cardiovascular disease or heart disease is that it's the number one cause of death among Canadians. And this is also true in our patients with inflammatory arthritis. So when we talk about heart disease, we're typically referring to things like heart attacks and strokes, but there are many other diseases that fall under this umbrella. So that's important to emphasize. And what we know about inflammatory arthritis is that this overactive immune system is making too much inflammation and attacking the joints where symptoms of pain and swelling can occur. But we know that that same inflammation that the body's making too much of can also deposit in the lining of blood vessels directly in the muscle of the heart and this increases the risk of heart disease things like heart attacks and stroke now one of the um, things we also want to spend some time on today is your workshop that you're going to be leading this week at the uh, at the annual conference and uh, the title which i love matters of the heart improving the screening and management of cardiovascular risk factors and disease in the rheumatology setting. Um, you're going to be speaking to your peers, uh, clinicians and researchers on this subject, but are there also some key takeaways that uh, our viewers, uh, patients, um, can also benefit from? Absolutely. So we're really excited and honored to be able to deliver this workshop to our peers the, the key takeaways from this is that treating heart disease in patients with inflammatory arthritis is really a multidisciplinary approach. You need multiple specialists involved to best manage risk factors for heart disease, including the arthritis. So managing inflammation and treating arthritis is really what I'm good at as the rheumatologist, but also screening and management of what we call traditional cardiac risk factors, things like diabetes, high blood pressure, having abnormal cholesterol, being at an unhealthy or overweight, and being a cigarette smoker are all what we call traditional risk factors for, for developing heart disease. And what we know in our population is that a lot of these risk factors are often ignored. They're not screened for as regularly as people without arthritis. And when they are identified, they're not as aggressively treated with things like blood pressure lowering medications or statins, which are you know, a, a large group of, or class of medication to treat cholesterol. So we know there's gaps in the management of traditional risk factors, but again, as a rheumatologist, I'm well equipped at managing inflammation. And the message of this workshop is that we need to manage both these sides of the coin to reduce the risk of heart disease. And so in this workshop, uh, myself and a fellow rheumatologist, Dr. Leahy Eder, speak to how we can target inflammation through a variety of means, including medications. And we're honored to have Dr. Paula Harvey, who's a cardiologist, speak to these traditional risk factors and how patients can be empowered to ask about them, you know, if they if they are at risk for those and how they can be managed and treated. When you talk about uh, a patient's healthcare team, they might not just be having a conversation on this topic with their rheumatologist or their uh, 
family physician, but it could be other members of the healthcare team as well. They're pharmacists, they're occupational or physiotherapists, among others. Um, what, uh, what sort of message do you have for them? Absolutely. So I think, you know, awareness is key. And so mm -hmm. the idea is not only that we want healthcare providers to be aware of this elevated risk of heart disease in patients living with inflammatory arthritis, but we want patients to know and we want patients to be self-empowered and, and advocate for themselves. So when they go to see their family physician, even if they have not been screened for their cholesterol, that they inquire and, and emphasize that they are increased or above average risk and that that should be done when they are speaking to their pharmacist, ensuring that you know, all of their medications are at uh, adequate doses, if they are taking something like a blood pressure pill, making sure that there's no interactions with the medicines that I prescribe, which is often a concern of patients, you know, not having to take too many medicines. Um, but I think I, I, this idea of the patient being at the center of the hub and having all of these different healthcare providers with different expertise involved in their care is really the ideal model that we're going for. And, and feasible in some parts of, of the world and some parts of Canada that we practice. And I'm mindful that that may not be true of, of the experience for every patient living with inflammatory arthritis, but certainly something I'm hoping as a rheumatology community, we can strive towards. An interesting point that you touch on in terms of the standards or models of care across the country and how that can be different for patients who live along the, the, the 49th parallel as opposed to living in the north or rural and remote regions. And one of the themes of this week's conference is um, equity, diversity, and inclusion. And it included the, uh, the opening keynote lecture by Dr. Uh, Grace Wright that I know you and I both attended. I'm wondering if this theme, um, is something that is also in play with the work that you're doing and, and other rheumatologists are, are experiencing. And that is um, people, uh, black, uh, people of color, indigenous peoples, um, we know um, that um, uh, heart disease as an example um, can affect them more uh, than the uh, white population. Um, how, um, in terms of this week's theme and what we heard from Dr. Wright, how do you think that's um, affecting a clinician or researcher's perspective? I think uh, just being aware and mindful that there are differences based on sex and gender and ethnicity. And, you know, for a long time, we've sort of understood that there might be differences in presentation of arthritis symptoms based on some of these things that I just highlighted, age and, and sex and gender and ethnicity. Ooh but also being mindful that certain comorbidities, as you alluded to, uh, including mental health and cardiovascular disease preferentially affect certain subgroups. At the end of the day, I don't know if the management per se changes so much, but I know in my practice, just being mindful of these uh, differences, especially being culturally sensitive, understanding that symptom presentation in a woman for heart disease is entirely different than how it may present as crushing chest pain in a man. And of course, the bulk of patients with inflammatory arthritis and with rheumatic disease in general are women. This is something that we're definitely focusing on with our own research is the, is the female experience in terms of symptom presentation different for heart disease mm -hmm. if you have arthritis uh, compared to um, uh, male sex, for example. And then when it comes to certain ethnicities or genetic backgrounds that might be increased risk of cardiovascular disease, I personally don't have much experience in this, but I know a lot of cardiologists have a, a very rich and keen focus on this. And again, I think this just, you know, underscores the fact that we should lean on the expertise of our colleagues and not try to do everything at once. But again, creating these models and multidisciplinary models of care to better uh, address the needs of our patients. One of the um, topics and questions that we get um, all year round, um, every year from our members and subscribers is around self-care. And I'm just wondering, um, as it relates to lifestyle and behavior changes that people can make as it relates to their inflammatory arthritis and heart disease, um, what are some of these modifiable, as we say, um, behaviors that they maybe should be aware of? Absolutely. So the good news is 
There are many shared risk factors for arthritis and cardiovascular disease, for example, that you can help reduce or modify. And so the first is exercise, get moving. And I know that can be a challenge and a huge barrier to overcome for people who live with painful arthritis. But I always say, treat exercise like a medicine. You don't want to overdose. You want to start at a small dose if you're not used to it and gradually build up your tolerance. So one is exercise. And we know that exercise is evidence-based in terms of being protective at re and, and reducing your risk of heart disease. And we know that it results in improved arthritis outcomes. The second easiest modifiable risk factor is smoking. Cigarette smoking is associated with development of rheumatoid arthritis. It's associated with um, medication uh, refractoriness, so not being as responsive to medicines. And we know it results in more disability and deformity. So cigarette smoking for arthritis is bad. Everything we can do to try to uh, help a patient quit or reduce the amount that he or she may smoke is beneficial. And of course, cigarette smoking is one of the strongest risk factors for heart disease, stroke, cancer, a whole host of other health conditions. So I would say exercise and smoking are the easiest ones to target, but I recognize that they're very challenging for patients to incorporate into their, into their lifestyle. And then again, this concept of leaning on our specialists for advice about nutritional counseling, uh, supplementation. This is the number one question I get asked when I am speaking with my patients about a new diagnosis of something like rheumatoid arthritis. What can I do to change my diet? What is an anti-inflammatory approach I should take? And this is where I really lean on my colleagues in naturopathy, in uh, dietitian and nutrition counseling. So it's, again, a team-based approach. And the concept to patients is small steps will add up in the long term. It's really a marathon, not a sprint. Are there, um, are there certain resources that our audience could go to to get more information? And then maybe we could provide that, uh, that link or links at the end of this uh, interview. And when it comes specifically to talk about these traditional risk factors of high blood pressure and diabetes and elevated cholesterol and smoking, for example, the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Canada has beautiful summaries for patients about risk factors, about lifestyle management, about resources in their communities that they can tap into. So the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Canada would be a great resource to look at. Thank you, Dr. Bindi, and thank you very much for your time. We know it's a busy week for you and you have your workshop coming up. But we very much enjoyed uh, speaking with you today. My pleasure. Thank you for uh, helping us get the message out. Have a good rest of the week.